A lot of people are sick these days, and nobody seems to really know why. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I'm taking you through my analysis of what's happening in the pandemic. I've been following this for over five years. My predictions have largely been accurate, and I was the first to interview Gert van den Bosch, and so I have seen his views over the years, even though it's not considered mainstream, it seems to be correct. He had always been concerned about an evasive Omicron variant, or and a variant that would be able to get around the immune system. And what I'm trying to do is piece together what I think is the phases that we're going through at the moment. So I've recently done this presentation with regards to predicting the viral storm. The link to this course is in the description and you'll be able to view it within an hour or two, depending on when you watch this. But um, I want you to join me in this scientific journey. And I'm therefore taking one section of this so that you can get an idea as to what I'm talking about through the whole presentation. And so the first thing you have to understand is that if this virus, and this is a beast of a virus. Please don't let anybody tell you that this is just a cold. Just because you don't have any major symptoms at the time doesn't mean it's not doing serious damage. And everything about this virus is to try and prevent it from getting beyond your mucosal immune system. If you can stop it here, wonderful. You will largely be protected. And so the challenge is how to keep people protected. And this is largely why I've also put together Humming Heroes, a simple strategic way just with you humming, gives you the science as well as the route that you can do. The link is in the description as well, teaches you about nitric oxide in a story format. Please, if anything, it's a free PDF. So even if you don't want to purchase the book, please get the free black and white PDF, read the story and understand the science. So where we are today is about trying to work out what is going on. Are people just sick because they're just sick or is this something else? So as I said, when I looked at my chart, I'm now talking about persistent infection. And um, what people don't realize is that when it comes to your immune system, every time there's a circulation of the virus, something like this happens. There is a disability occurring in your immune cells. They are still there, they just don't work efficiently. And this is what it would look like for your immunity. So T cells, B cells, uh, natural killer cells are oftentimes depleted. And this is then causing part of the problem. What it means is that people are much more vulnerable to infection. And this is a challenge. What in the world is going on? So I'll take you through quickly what I am referring to as persistent infection. And again, I remind you, if you want to see the full course, look in the description below. This is just one of the sections. Here we have this principle of persistent infection. And as I said, that's the first phase in terms of what is going on with people. Persistent infection, then immune dysregulation, smoldering inflammation, metabolic collapse, end-stage viral sepsis. This is, as I said, my thoughts, my analysis. Not everybody agrees with me. I'm okay with that. Just take a look at the science and try and make sense of it and try and help other people to understand what is happening. Now, the characteristics of this phase are, in effect, people, the best way to look at it is, what do they look like? They look normal. And you can see this person here is exercising. But guess what? They're always run down. When you talk to them, they, they, they know they're not feeling right. They have low energy and they may be having recurrent mild viral illnesses. They're still at work, but they're just fatigued. They're trying to do the best that they can. And that's what I describe as that recurring persistent infection. Sometimes I wonder 
whether or not people are able to clear the infection completely, especially because it sits in the sinuses, very hard to get rid of if you have underlying sinus disease. So within that framework, you have this ongoing issue going on with a lot of people. Some of the characteristics about them, they may be immunosuppressed um, on therapy. Sometimes it's just middle-aged people with weak interferon responses. A percentage of them will be unvaccinated with interferon autoantibodies. Auto but truthfully, I predict a large proportion of this is in a vaccinated cohort who have spike-related immune responses. And this is why they keep on getting infected. Not enough good mucosal broad immunity, too focused on the spike protein, which has been in the past, and therefore they are at risk for infection after infection after infection. And when you look at this, they then represent ongoing viral shedding, their interference response is blunted, but they only have mild inflammation. And so many people are underestimate this as the problem is is that very often they don't and they're not getting beyond it and this is a real issue remember when this virus gets beyond your mucosal immunity this is what happens technically more like this injectable spike it literally spreads blood vessels brain heart kidneys lungs um, and this kind of spread of the virus because of the spike protein attaching to the linings of endothelial cells is really a very, very important issue that needs to be acknowledged. And this is why it is that a lot of people are struggling. They have this persistent circulation of spike protein and virus floating around in the bloodstream. And Part of the reason why they're getting symptoms is the mechanism with regards to microclotting. And uh, when we had had um, uh, Joachim Gerlach, who is from Vedicinals and Malekasan, talking about the research that they had been doing, they are literally saying they are struggling to find people who don't have microclotting, even if they are asymptomatic. And what I had predicted was occurring was that you had an immune targeting of specific kinds of cells. And these I called the um, pericytes. These are round small blood vessels, especially around the heart, the big arteries. And they're almost being taken out by an uh, immune targeting by the lymphocytes. You can have some antibody targeting, but um, I think that over time it's becoming clearer and clearer that this kind of immune targeting may be being done more by lymphocytes, cell-mediated immune responses. Um, credit to William. Was it William? He keeps on saying the wrong things, but he, he made those points, very important points for us to consider. And this damage to these blood vessels, especially around the big arteries, in the heart, in the brain, in the kidneys, causes this ongoing inflammatory process and activates macrophages. Now, the thing about this cohort of people is that they tend to have activated macrophages. And it's only when the macrophages start to get exhausted that they shift into different phases. And because of these macrophages, they actually can do quite a lot of damage silently. And it's what I call the silent inflammatory process. I keep on explaining to people that if just because you don't have grossly overt symptoms doesn't mean that things are not happening underneath that are important. The perfect example of this is hypertension. Hypertension is like the prototype of silent damage. Most people who are hypertensive have no idea if they hadn't had their blood pressure done, they wouldn't know. They could be having extremely high blood pressures for years. Then one day they have a stroke or a heart attack. And in the same way, we have this undercurrent of inflammation that only rears its heads from time to time.
And this seems to be what is happening with these macrophages. And my image with regards to what it looks like with these macrophages being activated is that they then take up these nets or they release these nets, trapping spike protein, immunoglobulins, fibrinogen, and make these microclots. This then causes further damage in the rest of the body. And as I explained to people, this is silent. You will know it because you know you don't feel right. And that's the case with regards to the persistent infection. It's not that you have an infection and you, you get over it, and maybe you take a week or two, but you just don't feel as though you're getting beyond it. That's the cohort that I'm concerned about. We have opportunities to do things with them, but because they are just okay, they keep on hoping week after week, month after month, that they will still feel better. And I very clearly differentiate this cohort from long COVID. Long COVID tends to have far more significant symptoms with fatigue, headaches, brain fog, and so on. They, they tend to know they are not right. But it's the subtle symptoms that a lot of people are having from persistent exposure that, in my mind, makes them such a problem with regards to knowing what to do. Oftentimes, as I said, outwardly normal, but when you ask them, they always feel run down. Recurrent viral illnesses, still working, still functioning, but just not feeling right. If you want to see the answers for what I came up with, please take a look at the course below. I, I break it down into a number of different sections. And as I said, this information is my own extrapolation of the science, trying to see if I can find ways to make it make sense. Remember, one of your best defenses against this virus is to prevent it from infecting your sinuses. Please don't forget humming heroes. Humming is such a simple way to raise the nitric oxide in the sinuses and therefore protect yourself from infection. Nitric oxide is antiviral, it's antibacterial, it's anti-inflammatory, your body needs it, your blood vessels need it. These are simple strategies that everyone can do. Please make sure that you take advantage of it. Over the next few weeks and months, I'll continue to talk about different aspects of this. But please, if you want to join this course, look in the description below. We'd be happy to share more information with you. Have a great evening. A hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.